I came up with this scenario on the value of certain items while reading Crash Proof. These situations enter my head as I'm reading the book. I'm basing the idea of products and their values on the rock, paper, scissors value system. Rock crushes scissors, scissors cuts paper, and paper wraps rock, with each item possessing a certain value and function. Trade works the same way. First, let's take your basic tools and their production value. The most basic tool would be the farming hoe. Obviously, this tool would give the farmer an edge in production of food over another human farmer who did not have one. Now, a plow would be a tool of even greater value over a hoe. A plow with a mule on it would increase production significantly. Now, the tractor is invented, which obviously has greater production value than a hoe or a plow and can be used to produce millions of dollars worth of crops, whereas a hoe could only produce a few hundred dollars worth of crops. A tractor costs about $26,000 new, so the production value must pay for the cost of the tractor as well as create an increased profit for the farmer. Otherwise, why do it? Now, a sword has an altogether different value in the production system. A sword has no direct value in food production at all. You cannot use it to plow or build things. It's not made for that and is a specialized tool. However, it can be used to control the farmer. The cheap steel sword actually trumps the expensive tractor and farmer. The guy with a sword can rob the farmer of his hard-earned crops. However, it is a lot of work having to rob the farmer every time the swordsman needs food. So it would be best for the swordsman thief to band together with other swordsman thieves and form the state. Now, control over the farmers can be exerted through a centralized organized unit or government with a king thief or a president at the head and institute a system of daily food quotas to feed them, what we call taxes. If the farmer doesn't pay his quotas, his land will be taken away at the point of a sword by the swordsman along with losing the protection of the swordsman and given to a farmer who is more cooperative. On a side note, this system relies heavily on the king being an honest thief. Now the new farmer is put into place and the police put people who steal his food in prison. And the farmer pays for that too, since the swordsmen are Christian crusaders maybe, and killing people openly makes them look hypocritical. This expense gets bigger every year along with other programs. So for the king, the value of the sword might be of a higher value than food and production of that increase. It's a tool that can be used, but it's far more effective in groups called police and the sword gets replaced with the even more efficient and violent gun along with modern uniforms. Now the guys with the guns have an important tool that is just as important to them as a tractor is to a farmer. And, in, and this way they don't have to do the work of the farmer. Their jobs are to guard the farm, not to pull weeds. After all, farming is hard work with or without the tractor. Now the swordsman or police can drive around and just flash his gun around when he has, when he has to and not do any of the actual food production. He just controls production and ensures the farmer's property rights, which he can also easily take away at the order of the king, especially if there is a food tax dispute, or in some cases, for no reason at all other than greedy fascism. An average gun costs around $500, which is a big difference from the tractor costing $26,000, and as tools they serve similar purposes. The gun has been used to gain more lands for the farmer in a symbiotic relationship. The gun as a tool gets the land. The tractor tool produces the food to support both occupations as, as the first tool being used to start the process violently and the next tool would be the tractor in, which is used in the actual production. On a side note, because guns are cheaper to get than tractors and farmland, the police population will grow faster than the practice of farming cause displacements of farmers and deficits in food production. In the production of things, there is a seeming imbalance going on with their relative values, but one will find it 
hard to exist without the other, unless the farmer has a strong local support against the people with the swords, which is one reason the state keeps people traveling all over the place through schooling and commerce to keep people from organizing against them. Another product seldom mentioned is the value of propaganda items like magnificent statues and structures glorifying capitalism and freedom at the same time. The farmer might even give up some of his land for the construction of these objects, and if he's involved in politics and other business interests, he'll agree to it. Propaganda has an interesting effect on people. It draws other people to that site, so there are more people concentrated to that site in awe, whether that site has the latest architectural marvels or the newest technology. The effect is the same. Propaganda has the effect that it makes people think who, par who participate in it to think that their way is right. As in ancient Egypt, where one might actually believe God himself created the pyramids, reinforcing their belief in food production, which is the cornerstone of their culture. Farming is the Lord's work. The added mass populations create more invention and production. A population with millions will have someone who will invent some other tool to be added to the gross national product of the overall kingdom. What attracted that person to, this, to that site in the first place? The propaganda statue. What is the value of that? Apparently it's a central item that obviously has a higher value than just a common crop. Well, of course, these statues are detrimental to the productive capacity of the environment in the long run. Any power derived from them tends to be short-lived and eventually self-destructive. Now the production of food is directly related to the production of other items, like the gun. Since people don't have to spend time looking for food, they will have time for the production of guns and other products. No food production, no production of any other product, even the gun. If you don't believe me, stop eating and eat only what you actually produce or try working for a few days with no food or water. I've yet to see a car salesman eat a car. So the king and his hired guns control the whole thing, all of it designed to give them power and maximization of the production of stuff. Eventually housing and propaganda structures overtakes farming and now the king must use his tools to get more lands for the continued increased production of food to feed this population of gun makers, blacksmiths, statue builders, and soldiers. He must also maintain his control of the farmers he has now, who are getting tired of paying for all these other people who actually don't produce anything but items that are destroying his crops. The king could replace the farmer, but that might actually hurt production as the new farmer might need to be trained and might not possess the same skills as the farmer he executed. Instead, he conquers other farmers of lower class and skill. The farmer and the population also end up not tolerating the king and his gunmen, because they have been trained to believe that their way is right, and open violence would undermine the inherently valuable propaganda they put there in the first place. Also, the discontented population of non-police grows around and within his group. So in determining the actual value of stuff, the system is doomed to fail and consume itself. Eventually, when the farming fails from another, more valuable business consuming it, the propaganda itself fails too and gets buried and forgotten in the dust. Along with the civilization that once was. A society based on products in the form of the belief in unlimited production of people products and the propaganda to fuel that production is doomed to fail. In the end, what is sustainable is all that will be left. Either that or total annihilation from the products themselves and the resulting children bred to use those tools of production and destruction. As more guns are produced because of their value, there will be more gun users who will use those guns to get the less valuable but more important food. We are well on our way to cutting down the last tree to make a club or to burn all the oil left to melt metal to make guns. You say you don't believe me? Well, if you had the choice, which business production would you want your land to be converted into if you had the choice? A shopping mall, a machine shop, a gold mine, or a farm? The market will self-correct, as people say, but only after destroying the creators of the market first. 
to say what's left of the world, the gun makers, propaganda statue makers, and construction workers must be retired from their jobs and production halted. The way to do this would be to devalue property. First the real estate, then the food. If things are free, the production will slow. The conversion of the rainforest into products will be halted. Please visit my website, antiforeclosurearmy.com, and watch the YouTube videos there. Thank you. <clears throat>